So my name is Labahan Khanya. I'm an artist from South Africa, in Johannesburg. Um, and I work primarily in photography, but I also use other mediums such as film and installation. And the work that I'll be presenting today is from a latest body of work called Tale Tale, um, which actually touches on um, a lot of um, research that I'd been doing um, in the Karoo, which is in South Africa. And I had gone there and I'd spent um, quite some time, so it was like a residency. And before going there, I had been thinking around um, this concept of theater and photography and the similarities between theater and photography, which is a topic that I'm currently exploring. So because my work for quite some time has been predominantly um, photography, I've been considering, um, you know, that, that sense of scale of, um, of images. So from previous bodies of work, um, like um, her story from Gile Falaka, which I'll show you shortly, I had begun that work looking at um, my family history and was looking at images from family, from family photo albums and had then scanned some of the photos or re-photographed some of the photos from family members and then um, printed them life size and created sort of sets. So, you know, so going from that work at the moment, I'm considering what happens when that work becomes um, not just a set and then is photographed, but what happens when that works become um, an installation. So I will, so I'll, I'll bring up a few bodies of work, um, starting from an earlier practice, from my earlier practice, which I think will give you a good sense of um, of my background um, leading up to this work that I'll be presenting, um, Tale Tale. So I think we'll first start looking at um, images from an earlier body of work, Gile Falaka, and then I'll speak through them. So just bear with me for a bit. I'm just trying to open these images. It seems to be taking some time. Okay. So, So this was um, a body of work that I that is was basically from this was a body of work that was basically made in twenty Thirteen, and I was looking at family photos and had started collecting my family photos um, when I was traveling around South Africa. And in collecting them, I was also collecting stories behind these photos while researching my family history. And so um, what I then did later on with that body of work was to, um, to scan these photos that I'd collected and then print them life size um, and then create sets of these stories that my family had told me the way that I imagined them. And I then um, impersonated um, my grandfather because he, was the, he seemed to be at the center of a lot of these stories that my family members were telling me. Um, so this is basically family members, photos of family members taken from photo albums and um, that's my mother, for example, and my grandmother. And then this is me um, in my studio with these sets as the background. So this is me reenacting one of the stories of my family coming to um, live in the Transvaal from the Free State, so coming to the city. So this was their um, 
their first time basically living, um, living in the city. Um, so that's an earlier body of work. Um, and so, I mean, I can quickly share with you a few more images from that body of work. Um, So this is also another story of my family, um, basically about my grandmother um, and my grandfather. So it's a story where he used to have this alarm clock, which he would, um, you know, which he was, you know, so he was supposed to leave for work or wake up for work, I think at 4 a.m. And, you know, there'd be times when he'd been drinking and then he would um, set the time wrong and then he'd set it for 3 a.m. And, you know, he'd take a bath and get ready for work and only realize um, after bathing that he was actually woken up like an hour early. And then he'd wake up everyone and say they'd play a trick on him. So this is one of those stories that my family members had shared with me. So I'm basically reenacting them. Um, so I'd asked my grandmother to pose for this photo, then I photographed her and I photographed her bedroom. And so we reenacted basically um, that memory. So a lot of my work actually um, focuses on memory. Um, so it focuses on memory and fantasy. So it, it basically speaks to, um, you know, whether or not memory is factual. And um, so it plays, it plays on, you know, and the fact that when family members, for example, tell me the stories, they tell me, um, they tell me a story in a certain way today versus how they tell it tomorrow. So, um, so it basically also speaks back to photography um, and whether photography is also a truthful medium um, or, you know, or whether it actually leaves a lot of space for performance. So that's why that element of performance is quite important in, um, in my work. Um, so I think... I'll just show two more from this series and then we'll move on to another series. Um, so this is also another story by my family about um, them basically moving to, so not them moving, but, but my grandmother, my grandfather who apparently would cycle to and from work. So, um, so there's a story that one of the days when he was cycling um, back home, I think from, from work to, because he worked close to home, that he, um, he'd go home to go have his lunch and then go, you know, cycle back to work because he was relatively close. That, um, that one of the days um, he encountered some boys um, who wanted to rob him and they took his wallet, um, you know, and so he fell off the bicycle. So I basically reenact um, or reenacted or created a set with, um, with my cousins who I asked to then become like these boys or these robbers. Um, and then I designed a city, a sort of city industrial space. Um, to, you know, to tell that story. So, so that's earlier works, which were very much informed by family stories and like a family history and my investigation, I think of my family history. Um, so, so a lot of my, my work is informed very much by images um, that, that are taken from or sourced from photo albums, um, you know, because I think that for me, that play of, um, of time is also an interesting, is also quite interesting for me. Um, so, you know, so I think that that is something that comes across quite a bit in, in terms of my work um, that play on these different time periods. So with, with works i think before that i mean we could look at the reconstruction of a family which comes just before um but it would actually be great i think before we, we look at that to look at the extension of that body of work that i just showed you and that then became 
a film. So to then also show you my practice beyond photography, um, you know, which is these um, short films or these animations that the work extends into or becomes. So I'm just waiting for that to open. Um, so that is this new work is called, or that I'll be showing you now, is called The Pied Piper's Voyage. So it's basically this body of work that I've just showed you um, as a short film or animation, um, which basically looks at, sorry, it's just taking a bit of time to open. Oh, sorry. Let me just lower the volume. Then we we'll start it from the beginning. Okay. So screens. Um, so that was basically an extension, I think, of the body of work that I started with from Gilefalaka, her story, um, which was a commissioned work, which was the first time that I'd worked in that sort of style of working. So just extending my practice 
beyond photography and also beyond um, these sorts of sets and installations and performance. I mean, um, so I mean, I've moved more and more in that sort of direction with um, um, with film and with animation. Um, but that was the first animation, which was um, basically from the her story um, Gilefalaga series. And I think we'll look at also an earlier body of work, which um, has somehow become a body of work that has sort of um, which was an earlier body of work. So it's called, um, it's also called, it's also part of the Gilefalaga series. And, um, and that body of work was created about two years after my mother had passed away. And it, um, it began with me imagining that I would actually be, um, be, so I'd also looked at family photos and our family, um, family photo albums. And I realized with a lot of the photographs that, that I was finding of my mother who had passed away three years before that, were that a lot of the clothes that she was wearing um, were clothes that were, um, that were still in her wardrobe. Um, and these are clothes that she wore when she was quite young. Um, so I was interested in, in that and in, because I could also recognize that a lot of the the, the places where she had been photographed are places that I could recognize as well. Um, so I then decided to, um, to find a lot of these places that she'd been photographed and to then, um, to then basically restage or reenact these images um, of her. So, um, and I mean, I later then developed that work into, um, into works that, so I'm just gonna show them to you in a bit. Um, so I then at a later point then merged the two images. So her images and my images, making them one image. Um, so merging these two time periods where, you know, where she'd been photographed when she was in her, you know, in her twenties um, and, um, you know, and when I started that body of work, I think I was 20, 23. Um, and so it was basically, we're basically um, in the same place, um, wearing the same clothes around the same age, um, even though it had been so many years apart. Um, so that element of time was quite important, I think, with this work. Um, and then also, you know, asking questions around, um, this concept and this link between photography and death, um, you know, because of that, um, because of that, es um, that element of time and that play that it has on time. Um, so I'm just waiting to, for these files to open up. Sorry, my laptop is a bit slow this morning.
So they're just opening very slowly. Um, so this is basically some of the images from that series that I just mentioned, um, Gilefalaka, her story. And it's basically images of my mother um, when she was in her early 20s and late 20s um, and even into her early 30s. And that is me being for, um, dressed in the exact same clothes as what she was wearing in those images, um, which, you know, somehow seem to have survived all of these years um, and posing in the exact same manner that she was posing um, and photographing myself in the very same location. Um, so. And this is basically an image of myself when I was young, <laughs> um, when I was a baby and, um, you know, me reenacting my mother, um, embracing myself and my mother embracing me as a baby. So, you know, so I think for me, these archival images have been quite central in, um, in my work. Um, so I use them quite a bit with the different bodies of work, just in different ways. Um, Um, I mean, it's quite an extensive body of work, but it also, for me, it also asks questions around, um, you know, who, who is the ghost, I think, between the two of us. So, um, so it's not, you know, so I think it plays on that concept of whether she's the ghost or whether I'm the ghost um, and those conversations around death and spirituality, um, which photography often um, touches on. So it, this work, I think for me, just extends those sort of questions um, that photography is already posing um, around, um, you know, which I mean, touches a bit on Roland Batisse's death of the author, um, which is that play on time, which photography proposes um, you know, in this merging of these um, two time periods and that continuation of a moment that has been frozen and that gets to live forever. Um, so it's, you know, so it presents these images of my mother who gets to live forever through these images. Um, and my play on them is the fact that I then live in those images with her. So, it, you know, so it, it, it complicates the concept of time and of photography and the possibilities um, of living forever through photography or somehow it connects us into one photo where we get to live forever together. Um, so I think what I'll do now is speak to this body of work that I will be presenting um, in Brazil. <laughs> Let me do this. And
And so I think that with um, Telltale, what for me has been a uh, has been quite different, I think, about this process is that it um, is that it actually moves away from my practice quite a bit in that it, you know, doesn't focus on my family story anymore, but it becomes a, you know, a story about this, um, about the Karoo, which, um, you know, because I had, I had a commission by the market theatre and the market photo workshop, um, you know, because I had been speaking to them for quite some time about wanting to extend my work further into theatre, um, because I was interested in this concept of um, stage design um, and, you know, how set design creates this illusion of a world, um, you know, through these props and these um, these things that are built to give the illusion of an actual world, um, which my work had been doing for quite some time from the earlier works um, with these large cardboard cutouts. So I then started to look at um, these theatre plays. And so I was reading these scripts from... Um, by Ethel Fulgard, um, and one of them was called The Train Driver, um, which this image that I'm showing now focuses on. And it, um, it was basically looking at um, a story that, um, you know, Ethel Fulgard had read. And in the story, um, you know, this lady, um, you know, had killed herself. And um, I think she jumped in, in front of a train with her children. Um, you know, and then it was basically explaining um, the events leading up to that moment. Um, so I then looked at three scripts um, or three texts by Ethel Fugard, and then I then went to the Karoo to um, to do this research um, while I was there. Um, so, so this is basically some of the images that came from this research that. Um, that I was doing while I was in the Karoo. Um, and also um, a lot of, so a lot of these images were images that I took or photographed in the Karoo, um, but also, um, you know, were based very much on um, these scripts that I was reading. Um, so I also, even though the, the stories that I then um, or these, these scenes that these six images were based on the scripts, but it was also important for me to not just photograph the Karoo, but to um, speak with the, the people that live in the Karoo, um, you know, so that, you know, it's also, um, because that's part of my practice to have these sorts of oral histories and these conversations. So that's an important aspect to, to my practice. So outside of just the imagery that, um, when I photograph or when I'm, when I'm doing my research that I collect from these different places. But um, that element of oral histories and these conversations and these voice recordings um, between myself and these people that I, the people that I engage with when I'm traveling, that aspect is quite an important part as it informs also how I visualize um, a lot of these um, images or these scenes or these sets that I end up creating. So this body of work is basically um, is basically a result of of that research, which is basically based on um, New Bethesda in um, in the Karoo, and these scripts, these three scripts by Ethel Fugard. And I think to end it off with, I'll show you a newer body of work. Um, which is from 20, so it's from 2018, um, but it just takes on a very different approach to my practice.
Um, so this body of work is called Mushokomedi Watora, and it's basically a life-size installation, which um, I'd also been thinking about for quite some time, about um, the work not being um, just in the form of like a 2D print um, or as a or as a digital um, film, but you know that people can get to experience the immersiveness of these um, cutouts or these sets that I create. So this Mshokomeduato, which basically means lighthouse keeper, um, basically looks at, um, it's basically the first step towards realizing these um, life-size um, installations. And um, and in the middle, so this was the um, the first time that I showed the work. In the middle, it had a light, a spinning light that rotates, and it casts shadows as as it rotates in the space. And the people that enter, so there's these four inlets that people can enter this installation and walk around and interact um, with the installation. Which also, as the light rotates, they they turn into these shadows which are cast on the wall. Um, which becomes quite an interactive piece and it, beca it also becomes a space where um, the people that are walking in into this installation become part of the story and become part of this history um, of my family because in as much as it's my family history or my family story that I'm telling um, but it's quite a global story around um, migration and um, the change of names um, as a result of a family moving to different locations um, and the change of identity, the adapting to, to different environments and culture and language. Um, so it's, it's a global story. So in, you know, in them entering this, this installation from these four corners um, and, you know, interacting with it and their shadows being part of, you know, being part of the, the installation as, as the slide piece rotates, um, it you know it makes it a, a story that the audience or people that enter this work um, become a part of. And so I think I'll end this talk off um, with a short film, um, and then that will be the last part of my presentation. So this work is called Gesaliteng, and this will be the last um, the last part of my presentation.
So thank you. I think that will be the end of my presentation.